In this series, I meet families who are refusing to let a lack of cash deny them their dream home. So how much do you have? 25. So reaching for the stars. You've got to have the dream. Almost 200,000 households applied for planning permission last year. For most of us, these builds are a once-in-a-lifetime project. We've never extended a property before. I have seen some horrendous mistakes. With no guarantee of success. Everybody, I think, has just about had enough. It's all going to come crashing down like a hideous earthquake of horror. But get it right... There. And the home of your dreams. So fantastic. All this glass. Could be right on your doorstep. Did you ever think that you would live in a home like this? Never. We've done a good job. Prices rising faster than any year since 2007 and demand far outweighing supply, it's never made more sense to take a less exciting house and to transform it. Because you've got to build up there anyway. In the West Midlands, Jay and Steve have a unique vision for how to turn their ordinary house into an extraordinary home. I don't really like magnolia. I like dramatic rooms. I want a, a white, sparkly granite work surface and a really nice dark floor. Like an hospital. Huh? No, it's not. It's no, it's not. I'm not even going to have this discussion with you right now, Steve. <laughs> but first, I'm off to Herne Hill in South London, where actress Candida has lived in her garden flat for 18 years. It was the perfect property, but that changed six years ago with the birth of her son. Since having Rafa, the light of our life, it is just one big mess. Rafa's toys are taking over, and so are his friends. Has everyone got everything they want? Yeah. Mummy's got nowhere to sit unless she sits with you. The flat is fit to burst. Kicking them in, stuffing them. Stupid cupboard, I hate it. You know, it's just like a nightmare. Oh. We just need more space to have a happy family life, because at the moment it's a bit stressful. Candida's been given the chance to finally create the space she and her boyfriend need, and it's all thanks to her mother. My mum died three years ago, and uh, she very kindly left me some money that I'm putting to very good use, which I know she would have approved of. Unfortunately, the stress of risking mum's 200 grand nest egg is already taking its toll. It was very scary putting all that money into something that could just go pear-shaped. I need some help. Hi, lovely to meet you. Hello. Hi. So why is this an area that you particularly want to stay in? Why not move to a cheaper area? I've got lots of friends here. It's a really friendly street without everyone being in each other's face. There's lots of lovely parks. It just feels a bit like living in a village, but you're literally 10 minutes from the South Bank. Candida moved to Herne Hill nearly two decades ago, but with house prices 85% higher than the national average, there would be no chance of her buying here now. But if she could afford it, it's this nearby four-bedroom villa that she'd choose. So what is it about this house that you love so much? I love the look of the basement. It's very spacious. I love the openness of the kitchen. Very pretty view out into the garden. So this would be your dream home, really? Yes, it would. The problem is Candida's perfect pad would cost £900,000. But her flat is worth £500,000. So she'd need an extra £400,000 to move here. Unfortunately, she only has half of that. 200,000 is an awful lot of money, but sadly not enough to go out and buy something like this. So I guess you're hoping to turn your home into, into something... something like this. That would be amazing. Can you just do that? <laughs> sadly, it's not that easy to produce the space and feel of a grand period house when all you've got is a single story flat. These are big buildings on this road, which originally would have been one family house, but over the years they've been divided into flats. And if you own one of these flats and you're running out of space, there aren't really that many options. 
Candida's home is on the ground floor, with a lounge at the front, two bedrooms at the back, and the kitchen wedged in between. Hello, hi, lovely to see you. Lovely kitchen, I love it. Why does it not work? You know, there's just about room to eat, but not really for more than two people. I've only got one child, but he's got friends, and they all come round and we sit round this table and I hover by the sink, sort of throwing pasta at them. <laughs> at the moment, the kitchen is slap bang in the centre of the house. How does that work? It's actually the darkest part of the house. It's a crazy layout. The kitchen should be the welcoming heart of the home. Instead, it's gloomy and buried in the middle. Gosh, look at this fantastic view. That's amazing. While the light, bright room is used for sleeping in. This room is a bit of a waste, isn't it? Total waste. To have that looking out at the end. Right. <gasps> look at that. And this bedroom isn't the only wasted space. Below ground, Candida's flat comes with plenty of potential. So you're planning on digging out all the way underneath the whole of your flat? Yes. Everyone says basement, it's a lot of money, but it will literally almost double what I've got and give us the feeling of a house, which will be amazing. Candida has grand designs for tackling her flat's untapped underground and awkward layout. Her back bedroom will be extended and turned into a large kitchen diner. The old kitchen and lounge will be knocked through, creating a spacious, open-plan living room. But the big story is underground, where she hopes to dig out a whole new floor with a master bedroom, an ensuite, two further bedrooms and an extra bathroom. They're bold plans, and unsurprisingly, she's just a little bit scared. I'm literally having sleepless nights about it. I have to avoid people because they're so fed up with me talking about it. It's my inheritance from my mum, so I want to make the most of it, yes. So they really need to build a you can trust. Yeah. I'm just hoping that I've made the right choice with the right person because I'm putting my entire trust in him. With so much riding on this project, I think Canada's going to find this one rough, tough ride. This is a big build, but it's not half as big as the emotional journey that Candida is about to go on. Meeting Sarah today has made me feel a lot calmer about the whole process. I feel like I've got someone slightly holding my hand throughout it, which is what I've been wanting. While Candida frets over the plans for her home of 18 years, I'm off to Wolverhampton, where estate agents Jay and Steve have barely unpacked. We moved in three months ago. We struggled to sleep, didn't we? Because we were that excited about what we knew we could do with it. They bought the dated 1930s home for £200,000 after seeing its potential to be turned into a family-friendly space for newborn Oscar Bear and two-year-old Lily Blue. <laughs> but the couple are equally determined to create something eye-catching and unique. I don't really like magnolia. I like dramatic rooms. Keeping up with the Kardashians is where I get a lot of my inspiration. But I want a, a white, sparkly granite work surface and a really nice dark floor. Like an hospital. No, it's not. It's no, it's not. I'm not even going to have this discussion with you right now, Steve. <laughs> The gulf between the spacious statement home they want and the house they've bought is enormous. Here's an estate agent tour you don't normally hear. The kitchen is tiny. The bath's in the wrong position. The sink is far too big. It's closed in. It's very narrow. It's damp. We're not experts in extending properties. We've never extended a property before, and I have seen some horrendous mistakes. Despite being first-time renovators, the couple have set themselves the challenge to complete the build in just five months. It's a hard deadline, but we're going to do it. We are going to do it. The family live in the pretty parish of Penn. It's a five-mile drive to the centre of Wolverhampton and boasts a large supply of well-built but uniform 1930s housing stock. 
They want a house with a style like nothing else in the area, but this nearby home does have the space and layout they crave. What is it you really like about this house? I like the, the good sized rooms. They have got fantastic reception rooms, which is what we want and need. And the fact that the garden's all done, it's a char friendly garden as well. So this house would be worth about 370,000 and your house is currently worth about 200,000. Yeah. So you'd need another 170,000 yes. pounds to be yeah. able to come buy something like this. Yeah. Do you have that sort of money? No. We don't. No. 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 What do you have? Well, we've set a budget of £60,000. Yeah. Great. Busy time. Very busy time, yeah. At 370 grand, Jay and Steve's dream house is way out of reach. Their home is worth 200000 leaving them short to the tune of £170,000. Unfortunately for them, they have savings that are just a fraction of that. I think transforming this house on their tight budget will be tough, but at 200 grand, I think Jay and Steve have bagged a bargain. Having an old garage to the side of a house like this cries out for you to extend to the side. But also, this house is raised up and it tends to end up being worth a bit more money because there is a, a slightly greater sense of grand about it. But it's as much about what's happening out the back as what's happening at the front that sold this house to the couple. I mean, this is absolutely extraordinary. You've got a 60-foot vertical drop with the most amazing view beyond. Hopefully we can get glass panels across here so we can enjoy this view. Mm. Wow. Glass panels? Yes. Yeah. 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 I'm excited about it. I think that what you'll gain, the view, it's worth it. So very bold ideas for a 60 grand budget. And of course, this money has to stretch far beyond just sorting out a garden fence. So apart from the fact this looks like a sauna from the 1970s, yes. yeah. what, what do you not like about it? It's too small for us for a start, isn't it? It's really quite damp uh, and it's cold. So what you're planning at the moment is to knock well out into the garden yeah. and to the side. So, but it's actually an enormous space that you're yes. trying to create, isn't yes. it? You have a white vision for this. Yes, a white kitchen, white work surface, white cupboard doors. If I'm really honest, on a £60,000 budget, you haven't really got money to splash no. around. Mm. It's tight, it is very tight. It's tight. You've just got to build it. Yeah. yeah. I think that might be as far as you get anyway. When finished, the completed home will be barely recognisable from the original property. Well, that's certainly the hope. The couple's plan is to demolish the garage and create a whopper of a wraparound extension. The ground floor will consist of a utility, playroom, living room and dining room. But the real showstopper is a monster kitchen diner come family room. Upstairs there will be a huge master with ensuite, three further bedrooms and they'll keep the massive family bathroom where it is but add a lot of extra bling to keep up with the Kardashians. The question is, can you have too much bathroom? It's a really good sized bathroom, isn't it? Yeah. I mean, it's almost too big to be a bathroom, dare I say it. We've had that conversation. I don't think you could have too big a bathroom. <laughs> oh, yes, you can. <laughs> if you move the bathroom to the front box room, then you end up with a really good sized bedroom, yeah. whereas that room is really a home office. Yeah. What? I'm you know I'm right, don't <laughs> you? <laughs> I'm going to keep I it totally as a bathroom. Agree. I do like it as a bathroom. Yeah. She's got absolutely, she's got, I am not listening <laughs> here. Oh, it's white noise, I'm afraid. Uh... Yeah, just... <laughs> You're really almost turning it from a four bedroom house to a three bedroom house. And that's mad if you're planning on selling it. We've got some real issues to think about before we, we begin. Yeah, I think I need to have a, a serious think about the bathroom about moving to the front of the house. Because Sarah knows what she's doing, you've got to take her advice on board, so I've got to start thinking with my head as opposed to my heart. Mm. Steve and Jay have got big expectations of this build. Problem is, they've only got a budget of £60,000 and they're going to have to make every decision right if they're going to pull this off. And with two families trying to create spacious, striking family homes by building them instead of buying them. And they're saving a fortune along the way. 
In the West Midlands, estate agents Jay and Steve want a large and luxurious wraparound extension. It's a lot to ask of their £60,000 savings, so Steve is doing a lot of the build himself. I'm going to use up as much holiday as I can to work on the property myself. In South London, Candida wants to dig out an entire new story for her cramped ground floor flat. She's risking all of a 200 grand inheritance from her mum and putting all her faith in Builder Roger. Here's a contract signed on the dotted line and then there's no going back. Oh, God. Ready to start. Stage one is ripping up the floorboards for a conveyor belt to take out excavated earth from under the house. Not much on it at the moment, is there? Unfortunately, it's not the speed of the dig that's causing Canada sleepless nights. I'm worried that the house will fall down, that the neighbour's house will fall down, that all the drains in the neighbourhood will burst. I can just see her on the phone to me every day, panicking about this, that and the other. I have to be honest, I'm not looking forward to it. I'm worried that there'll be cracks in everybody's house down the road and that when it's done, it'll all flood anyway. A couple of weeks ago, it got that stressful. I told her I wasn't prepared to do the project anymore. But after floods of tears, she talked me back into it again. Some parts of the country have seen planning applications for basements rocket by over 2,000% in the last 10 years. But remember, they're more expensive than either loft conversions or rear extensions. So weigh up the costs against the potential profits before you build. Use a basement specialist and insist on seeing examples of their work. And keep the neighbours on side, as you may well require one or more to sign a party wall agreement. Candidates terrified digging down will cause a major disaster. But I think this is just the fear of the unknown. Once you understand the process, it won't be so scary. Yes. So I'm taking her to another basement conversion a few doors down to show her how houses are kept from collapsing. So this basement is just under two weeks in. And the first stage is they prop it up and then underpin it. So this big slab of concrete down there has been poured by digging a hole, shuttering a section, putting concrete in, letting it set. So you've got the house which is so much more secure than it ever would have been. So it's not going to fall down? Not with that underneath <laughs> it. <laughs> Canada's other big fear is flooding. So next, I'm showing her how basements are made watertight. So this is 10 weeks further on, so 12 weeks into the build. It's now had the membrane fitted to the walls, so whatever happens, all the moisture from the soil won't get into this section. And I can prove it. Even if you had torrential rain, this is what would happen. You'll see that it trickles down the walls, under the floor, down into the drainage system, leaving the inside of the basement with all the rooms down here completely and totally dry. Can I just put my hand here quickly? There's nothing coming out. I've got an image in my head now about how it's all going to work. I'm going to have a brilliantly underpinned flat, which will make the whole house really secure and be really nice and dry. That's the main thing that you worry about. Hampton, the five-month build of the Reed family 60 grand extension is starting. Steve is working on site. Jay and the children are living on it. Do you want me to hold it for you? No. It is stressful. It would be so much easier, obviously, if you know we lived somewhere else and we were able to come here on a day-to-day -day basis, but it's not practical. We can't afford to do that. To create the spacious, blinged-up home Jay dreams of on their limited savings, Steve's spending every waking moment he can on the project. I've taken the day off to help with the demolition. My builder, unfortunately, has been called out on emergency, so I'm going to crack on on my own and see what I can get done. I am very apprehensive about it, but um, it's just going to be a big learning curve. And today's lesson, bringing down a garage roof with a handsaw, will take forever. 
I'm just calling uh, Martin, the builder, to see if I can use his power saw uh, and having a minute's rest at the same time. Steve, bless him. I mean, he doesn't get off the phone. Hello, he's ordering sleep, material. He doesn't please. stop. We go to sleep. He's exhausted. And then he wakes up at 3 o'clock in the morning and goes, I forgot to do this. In fact, you hold this. I'll drink my tea and you can carry on for a minute. Jay and Steve are desperately trying to get their build finished on quite a small budget of only £60,000. I'm just hoping it's not Mission Impossible. They're planning to build using concrete bricks, but I want to introduce them to a new kid on the block. Yeah. You're right up against it in terms of timing and speed, aren't yeah. you? Yeah. These are clay interlocking blocks, which can be used instead of concrete blocks or thermalite blocks, and are far quicker to lay far easier to lay and they're quicker to dry. Especially the amount of um, brickwork we've got on the shell, there's quite a considerable amount, so if, uh, saving is really important at that level. These bricks have been used in Europe as an alternative to breeze blocks for decades, but they're new to UK construction. They're easier to handle because they're lighter and they need less mortar because of the way they interlock. Steve and the builders soon get to grips with their new materials and in a matter of weeks the extension shoots up. We're actually seeing them go up and, and, and how fast they, they go up, it's really encouraging and um, it has saved us a lot of time. The bricklayers, once they'd actually got a few courses up, it was actually easier than what they were used to. For more information about extending your house or increasing your floor space, check out my scrapbook at channel4.com forward slash beanie. In South London, it's week seven of Canada's cavernous basement conversion. Work's progressing nicely and Canada seems to be calming down. I'm being quite relaxed, I think, but I'm, I'm slightly worried. I'm, I'm sort of deluding myself that suddenly there's going to be a barrage of decisions that need mm. to be made. Canada seems to be much more at ease with the build now, but now is the time that she needs to work out what she's going to put in her basement once it's built and where the rooms are going to be and how they're going to work. Candida is planning to increase the size of her third bedroom by extending to the side, but I'd love her to think even bigger. Now, I wanted to talk to you about bedroom size, really. All right. I thought it was easier for you to picture it if I laid it out. This is going to be the size of your third guest bedroom downstairs. So this is the wall here, and that's the wall there. It's this size here. It's like a little prison cell, really, isn't it? How would you feel about putting guests in a room this size? Well, they obviously wouldn't stay for very long, which would be good. <laughs> <laughs> I really think that you should dig out a little bit further and... Make this a make, decent size. And make this a decent bedroom. The cost of it at this stage, while you're digging, would only be a couple of thousand pounds. And you could easily claw a couple of thousand pounds back from the kitchen. I have to talk to um, my knight in shining armour, won't I? <laughs> <laughs> Bit more digging. <laughs> this is why you are here, <laughs> to help me. Well, <laughs> For Candida, a bit of extra excavation is minor, when you consider the sheer scale of this build. It just feels quite overwhelming, really. I can't actually imagine it being habitable. <laughs> Just every time I come, it looks more and more like a disaster movie, but I know they're working really hard. The electrics and the plumbing plans are coming along. That makes not me that very far nervous away. because um, I don't feel I'm on top of that. Then I'm worried it's all going to come crashing down like a hideous earthquake of horror. With her massive budget of 200 grand on the line, Candida has something new to fret over at every stage. I'd be really worried for her if she has to face a major problem. In the Midlands, work on the Reed's massive extension has entered its sixth week, and the new walls have gone up. Now you can really see the space here now, can't you? I mean, it's, yeah. It's yeah. going to be massive. Yeah. yeah, it's a lot bigger than I anticipated. Yeah. I see you use the bricks. Yes. Have they made a big difference in terms of speed? Incredible. Yeah, you're going to be up to the eaves before you yeah. know it, aren't yeah. you? 
For her interiors, Jay's taking inspiration from her style icon, Kim Kardashian. Unfortunately, right now, it doesn't quite look like Kim's place. Right here is a building site, open to the elements and full of dust and rubble. And then, literally just here, Steve and Jay are trying to live with two children. And at the moment, the home is encroaching on the building site and the building site is encroaching on the home. You're trying to live with, you know, with dust like this. Yeah. yeah. So you've got baby food there and yeah. those are the nice and forks you're trying to eat with. It's given us both, Darren. Plus, obviously, running the project as well. A lot of sleepless nights. So. What I would do, if I was you, is I would divide off the back space from the front space. It's tough enough living on a building site, but caring for young children too, that can be a real challenge. At least there is a solution. Shut the doors, seal it up with tape so that no dust comes through. Make a barrier that you don't keep opening and shutting and you don't use. That's the key to making it work. It's quite evident that we have to do something because everything is literally now everywhere. You've just got to try and keep your head together, haven't you? If Steve and Jay don't separate the building site and their home, the added pressure might just be the thing that tips them over the edge. Two families who are in the process of turning their imperfect homes into jaw-dropping dream properties. In the West Midlands, estate agents Jay and Steve want a grand family home on a 60 grand budget. What do you think? Wow, it's amazing. While in South London, actress Candida is three months into her project digging out a whole new level for her garden flat. Nothing's fallen down so far. <laughs> She's committed all of a 200 grand inheritance on the build, so obviously wants it to be perfect. But never having been involved in a project like this before, the pressure is huge. Hi, hello, how are you? Mm. Lovely to see you. And Candida is finding it tough. It's so serious and big, I can't let myself go there, really. I think we're about a third of the way through, and this is the worst bit, isn't it? It's hard graft and it's hard work, but the next stage, once they've got the earth away, mm -hmm. fitting it out, that's relatively quick. It will happen. It just, it just feels quite overwhelming at this stage. Mm. To help Candida look to the future, I've brought something to show her. On the ground floor, there's a hallway that I think will be dark and dingy. However, I have an alternative. I wanted to talk to you about this area here because currently this is an open hallway and it's going to look a bit like this. Is that how you pictured it? You've got the door to the lounge on the left there mm. and those doors on the right here. One is a cupboard. This is what I think you should think about doing. Currently, you have your stairs over there, mm -hmm. and I think you should put the stairs here. Oh, wow. That's beautiful. It would completely transform the way the whole flat feels and make it feel more like a house. That, that's going to look amazing. Thank right. you. Let's have another look. <laughs> I think Sarah's suggestion of moving the staircase to in front of that big, long window is amazing, and it'll really be a beautiful feature when you come into that dark area. But before Candida can get carried away with the plans, as the build enters month five, her worst fears are realised. The site has flooded. The soil's absolutely wringing wet because the drainage system, which took the rainwater from the roof and collapsed, and it's all been emptying that into the basement. Roger, the builder, is struggling to stay on top of the deluge. We've been coming down here in the mornings and we've been having half a metre of water, which we've had to pump out before we've started work. Canada's got water coming from all directions. We've got water coming in because of the broken drainage, but not only that, the neighbour's flat above has got a leak as well. She's got water coming down through her hallway ceiling as well. 
All Canada can do is wait and hope Roger and his team can turn the tide. Over in Wolverhampton, Jay and Steve's build has entered the fourth month. The roof and windows are going in and Jay should be going back to work after her maternity leave. Unfortunately... What's the matter? The couple have hit a problem. Their build has fallen behind schedule. I'm supposed to be going back to work in six weeks' time. With the way that the house is at the minute, there's no way that I can do that. I can't go to work, take the kids to nursery, child mind, then come back and have to deal with all the mess, which there will be. So I've spoken to the company that I work for to see if I can basically add on another two months onto my maternity. And yes, I will be out of money. The loss of a second salary will hit them hard, as will the extra weeks in challenging conditions. Our living space is actually getting smaller and smaller, and when it gets smaller, you get more stressed. It has got the potential to really get you down. You've just got to stay positive because you've got children as well. If you get down, they'll pick it up. We haven't got a kitchen at the minute, but the fact that I know what I'm going to put in there, that's what keeps me going. Oh. Jay has a clear idea of her dream kitchen. Jay's got a heart set on a white kitchen. The white work surface and the white cupboards. And she's made it obvious to Steve that nothing will change her mind. Do you think it looks a bit blue? That's yeah. cream. There is a pure white one. Right. Well, we need to go and have a look at the pure white one, then. I personally think we should put some colour in somewhere. This is enough white. This isn't white. That's more of a white. Yeah, there was a white gloss one round there. It still feels a bit clinical to me. That's nice. It is nice. Because it's different, isn't it? But it's not what I'm looking for at all. Not even in the slightest. Mm. What about a variance of it, though? Is there other options of the colours? No. The doors? Rather than everything being one colour? No. Over in South London, and after a week of work, Roger has fixed the damaged drain. Canada was absolutely freaked out about these drains, but we've now rectified it and I think she's a bit calmer. So, with disaster diverted, Canada can finally turn her attention to the interiors. The kitchen's ordered. I think I've got an idea on the colours I want. Are you still going for the hand-painted look? Yeah, there'll be grey and pink inside to go with the... Grey and pink? There are loads of decisions, which is, was my biggest fear right from the beginning. The floor's got to go down, hasn't it? And what are we going for this week? I've got to go. I've got to make some decisions quick. It's been six long months since Steve and Jay started on their project, transforming their dated house into the stylish home they longed for. There's been hard graft. You've just got to try and keep your head together, haven't you? Hard decisions. That's nice. It is nice, but it's not what I'm looking for at all. And hard times. A lot of sleepless nights, uh, a lot of worrying, stressing. But finally, their unique vision is finished and ready to be unveiled. It does look fantastic, but the truth about this house is that the main transformation went on at the back. Five months ago, this house was an uninspiring example of 30s architecture. Now, it's a glorious contemporary family home with a huge wraparound extension, lovingly crafted by Steve and tailor-made for Jay's distinctive style. Hello! How are you? Come on you in. Very well. Thanks very much. Inside the cramped, dour kitchen, previously dressed in that unforgettable 70s sauna look, is now a vision in white units and, surprisingly, with a splash of colour, boasting massive living space cleverly designed for all the family to enjoy.
This is absolutely spectacular, the space. It's lovely, isn't it? Do you miss the, the sauna? Yeah. No, not at all. It wasn't a pleasant place to be at all. But now you're just drawn to this room, aren't we, all yeah, the time? Yeah, you want to spend more time here, don't you? Yeah. You wanted a really white kitchen, didn't you? You were very determined to have a completely white kitchen. <laughs> yeah. But actually, I'm glad you introduced some other colour in yeah. here. I had it in my mind that that's what I wanted, and now I am so glad that I didn't go for an all-white. As it is now, I'm happy mm. with it. It's really, really great. Yeah. It's fantastic. Yeah. From the new living space, you get a glimpse of the huge garden leading to that spectacular view of open countryside beyond. Five months ago, that was obscured by a wooden fence. But Steve's determined plan to showcase the view with a fabulous glass balustrade has really paid off. How do you feel about it now it's um, in place? I'm really excited, I'm delighted with it. It's better than I even thought it was going to be. Yeah, I mean, it is really, really spectacular. Yeah. There is something really magic about this house. It's, I haven't been emotional about anything really on the build, but when I saw this, it was quite touching. I thought, you know, it uh, brought me close, I've got to be honest. We've just got to make the most of this view, and uh, that's what we've tried to do. Yeah, it? well, you've done it with knobs on. Yes. yes. <laughs> Swapping round the bathroom and box room was something of a bone of contention for Jay. But did she see sense? Yes, she did. Now she has a good-sized fourth bedroom that the home deserves and the fabulous bathroom full of Kardashian bling she so desperately wanted. Oh, my word, this is very glamorous. It's beautiful, isn't it? So are you glad you went with your head rather than your heart? Yes. When you said about putting the, the bathroom to the front, I kept thinking, well, it's not going to look as nice because it's going to be smaller. But having seen it laid out with all the shiny bits in it, I love it. You do like the glitzy glamour, don't you? Is this the image you had in your head? <laughs> yes. I used to get the kids in the car and we'd just go shopping for shiny things for the bathroom. <laughs> and I love it. This is my space. Actually, it's not a bad size, this. No. This is a really good size bathroom, and it's meant that you've got a decent sized bedroom. Exactly, so everybody wins. Oh! Steve's bust a gut on this. Yes. He has project managed absolutely everything. He knows everything about this house, and I am so proud of what he's achieved because he's done this. This build has been a labour of love for Steve and Jay. They've not only invested all their time, effort and savings into it, they've also stamped their own personality onto every last detail. You wanted this house to really stand out and be spectacular. Has it turned out how you'd hoped it would be? Everything, every part of it, you know, we're really happy with. And I do think it's a little bit different. It's our taste to it, isn't it? You bought this house for 200,000, yes. didn't you? And you were going to spend 60,000 yeah. on it. What did you end up spending? We spent 75, yeah. just under 75. Which is really impressive. I mean, you've made that money go a very long way. You've yeah. done a lot of work for it. And yeah, we stretched every penny. The offset is time, you know, it takes longer if you do it yourself, but the savings are there. Steve and Jay's dream house was worth £370,000. That's 170,000 more than their home but they've created their unique vision for just 75,000 pounds. 95 grand less than it would have cost them to buy their dream home. And that's not the only good news. You stand a very good chance of getting somewhere up to 375 for it. Oh, wow. So I, I think you've created a good 100,000 pounds of equity in this house, which really you've created by hard graft. Hard graft. You've, yeah. you've worked hard and you've earned uh, well, it's a lot of money. Yeah, yeah it's so fantastic. It is. It's a lot that more is than fantastic. we thought, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. We haven't done it to make the money, but it's nice to have that there as well. It's come as part of the package, really. We just want to enjoy it a little bit yeah. now. <laughs> so Steve's delivered on his promise to build the perfect pad, and Jay's got the bling she wanted. But will Canada's basement ever get finished? In South London, Canada's 200 grand hole in the ground is finally watertight. And work is moving on to the interiors, including moving the stairs to the back of the house. But Canada still has concerns. The staircase is quite a dominant feature, which is taking up a bit of space. 
The only thing I'm slightly worried about is how it affects the rooms downstairs. But I hope we can make it work. I believe these changes will transform access into the basement. To show her how, I'm taking her to another conversion nearby that has a similar layout. So these amazing glass stairs, which throw the light from upstairs down into the basement, which means by the time you get down here, it's actually really light and bright, and what a fantastic space it is, isn't wow. it? It's just beautiful. This staircase does two jobs, so it's a light well and a staircase, all in the same space. I really like the house. It's got a lovely light feel to it. Elements of this, I, I hopefully I'll be able to achieve with mine. I'd just like to move in tomorrow, really. For eight months, Candida has battled fears about her basement conversion. I'm worried that the house will fall down, that all the drains in the neighbourhood will burst and Pern Hill will flood. And the odd emergency. We've got water coming in because of the broken drainage, but not only that, the neighbour's flat above has got a leak as well. But she's faced down her demons, and the finish line is finally in sight. Candace has experienced a whole gamut of emotions with this build, from spending her mother's inheritance to trying to overcome her fears of building work themselves. I'm dying to see how it all turned out. Her old ground floor flat of 18 years has been given a fresh coat of paint and a new lease of life. But this project was always about what could be achieved below ground. Hello, hi, hi how are you? Good to see you. Mm. This is looking, I can't wait to see. <laughs> Come on. Exciting. But to get there, first I have to take in the stairs before you'd enter the cellar down these dark, dank steps. Now they've been moved to the back and are flooded with light that streams in through a stunning feature window. So this is the new staircase position, which is lovely and light. This really is fabulous, isn't it? I mean, absolutely spectacular. To me, it makes it feel like a house, mm. proper house. Mm. It's so much better having it here and not pokily shoved under where the other ones were. It just feels a bit different than exactly what I wanted space-wise, which is wonderful. With this big window, it's just transformed it. But come and see the bedroom. Good, yes. And first on the tour is Candida's new space. To create it, she's had to dig deep in more ways than one. But wasn't it worth it? I can't believe how light it is. You were really worried about it being dark down here, weren't you? Yes. Have all your fears been alleviated now? Totally. I can imagine even on a winter's day it would be fine and feel quite tranquil. I'm very happy in here. It's hard to believe that I just had that tiny long cellar that was just good for nothing really, apart from storing old paint you never use. And now it's just been transformed into this. It's, it's amazing. And it's not just Candida who's got her own new bedroom. Rafa's also got the den he needed. Upstairs, on the ground floor, Candida's old bedroom at the back has been opened out, ready for her new kitchen to be fitted. What a fantastic view over the garden. Before, you had this lovely garden that you didn't really see, whereas now, with the sliding doors, you can see it yes. all year round, whether it's cold or hot, yes. summer, winter. Because it was all quite packed in before, wasn't it? I mean, it was a lovely homely kitchen, but quite a squash. I'm just so excited by having a lot more worktop and a big table there, you know, that you can just fit more than three people around comfortably. Well, it's fantastic, I've got to say. What a gorgeous room. And when finished, it will be even more gorgeous. It's pale wood floors, washed out grey units and muted marble worktops will be offset by mix-and-match retro styling, pops of intense colour and industrial chic. So Candida has finally been able to decide on that kitchen design. And with the project just weeks from completion and all her bills up to date, has she managed to balance the books?
Of course, this was quite an emotional journey for you, wasn't it? Because your mum very sadly died, didn't mm. she? Do you think that she'd be proud of what you've done? Yeah, she'd be thrilled that her money had gone to such good use. I'm so lucky to have had it and to have had her. Yeah. When you started this project, your flat was probably worth £500,000, so about half a million. You were going to spend two hundred. How much did you end up spending? Yeah, it's pretty much that. With a £900,000 price tag, Candida's dream house was way beyond her reach. She would have needed four hundred grand to buy it. But she's managed to dig out her own ideal home for half of that. That's £200,000 less than it would have cost to buy her dream house. And she's made a tidy sum in the process. I think now it would value at certainly 750. So you would have made 50,000 pounds of equity on top of what you've spent. It feels a very decadent thing I've done, but I just feel so excited that we've created a home exactly, you know, what I wanted. Candida desperately needed more space for her and her son, and now she's got it. Her and her builders have worked tirelessly to create this wonderful home. And now, with a finishing line in sight, they have many years of relaxation in front of them.